this is up, Nikki. You're always welcome to join me in expanding your knowledge base. Comments are always welcome, man. Please subscribe. You come down to the contact, okay? Now, it's easy to put back in there. Just remember, well, it can't go in the wrong way, really. So it can't get in, it's not going to fit going in the wrong way. So you're going to have to put it in the right way. And then it will slide right back in. You see? And then it's operational again. So you can't put it in the wrong way. All right, so let's take that off. Now, we have our bare copper piece, and that's where it's going to make contact with the wire. So, what we'll do is we're going to twist our wire first, right? Yes, we are. Okay, I don't know if I'm... But I believe I went the exact different way than I did before. Okay. So we're going to twist it real good. Okay. You want to feed your wire through the hole on the side just like I'm doing now. Okay. You see? Feed it through the hole. And then let it come off the top of the cap. That's exactly the way we want it. Okay, if you have to twist some more to make sure that it's solid and not coming apart, do so. Okay, now let's go back to our hook part. Okay, you want to turn your hook up, not down towards the ground, but up towards the sky. You want to feed your wire down through there because you want your wire side to be on the same side as your hook side so just go ahead and feed it through so you can see it I'm just going to turn it to the side so you can see and if you can see the hook is pointing towards myself and I am feeding it through that same side okay so it's through as you can see the wire is going to be coming out the same side as the hook okay I hope you can see that because there's a reason why I'm gonna let it I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit cuz I don't want the insulation to be resting against the metal so that it might burn when we solder it okay I'm gonna fold it up just a little bit so mine is looking like this okay uh, right it's looking like that now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and twist it around the middle part so let's go ahead and twist it and keep twisting it try to keep it neat and if you need the assistance of some kind of tool to get it through that middle part okay I'm trying to make sure everything stays on the camera so you can see the stranded part is good you want it to be the stranded part cuz now that we have it twisted through we're gonna go ahead and solder it so what I do is I just use the helping hands and I keep the um, insulated part out and then I clip it right there on the plastic and that's fine. I want to twist it so that you can actually see the flat part of that. Okay. Now with the soldering iron and of course you want to tin the iron before you start tinning the iron means you want to take your solder and you want to hit your soldering iron tip with it a little bit and you want to 
pop it inside that Brillo wire a couple times. As you can see, it came out very silver. Okay, that's ten in it. Now, I'm going to hold my soldering iron underneath and let it heat up from the bottom. The solder is going to be dabbed on from the top. The reason being is that it will soak into the strands. Now I'm going to try to hold it to the bottom because I don't want it to soak in so close to the insulation. So I'm just going to hold the solder iron up against it and it don't take long. There we go. See? It don't take long. And just take your time. You don't have to try to do it fast or anything. Okay. So, as you can see, since I kept it like towards the bottom and in the middle, it did not, it, you know, um, interfere with my cord there. Okay. So, I believe it's cooled off now. And the reason why, and notice, it's soldered on very well. Okay. Nice, shiny, silver solder. And it actually went through the back. And soak through it soaked through the strands and that's exactly what we want at the same time we kept it from actually going through the top we didn't really want it to interfere with that or to heat up our insulation but you know just do your best okay especially if you're inexperienced now all we have to do at this point is pull up our cap okay All right, and there's only one way you can readjust, re put this in. Keep in mind the hook is going to face the same direction as the hole. Um, like you see here, these have not been done. Notice the hook is the same direction as the hole. You know, they're facing up right now because that's the way I have it, and that's the same way you're going to put it back in. So I'm just Pulling the cord in just a little bit. There's little notches inside this cap. So you want to make sure it sit inside the notches. And go in so it catches. You don't want it to just sit up there. You want it to go in right. So let's see here. All right. So just keep an eye on the notches in the side because I'm sure you can't see it. But when you get your own, you'll see the notches in the side. And then just push it in. It's going to take some filling around, but you'll get it. Now, the way you know it's in there is when you try to pull it it won't come right out okay now you're not going to pull it hard because it's meant to come out it's meant to have the spring action you see but it's meant to hold its place so you could feel when it's in there even though it may not look like it because as you can see the new ones are just like that too this one is just a little bit farther up and i believe it's because of the cord so but it's attached. It's in there. Okay. So, when you get it like that, congratulations. You made a test hook connection clipper. So, there you go. Nice. And you're really going to like it when you're testing things. And I'm going to make a video to show you how this goes. And I hope that the information provided has been helpful to you. Please remember to subscribe. Happy building and happy coding.